Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. And what I feel is one of the greatest strengths of this channel is providing a different perspective on precious metals. The metal we're going to focus on in this video is gold. And I think this new paradigm shift of thinking will help you have a better understanding and maybe give you a little bit of an encouragement on where gold is now and how it is, has performed this year. So let's explore. Gold, it is the metal that we all understand to be the ultimate wealth preservation device. It is a beautiful metal and comes in various different forms. What you are seeing here is this, how it comes in coin form in various different diameters and purity. Nonetheless, what we see with gold when we talk about it is its price. And you may have heard me talk about the difference between price and value, and that is something that we should consider. Dollars are how we measure the price of gold. And so far this year, it's down over 6%. And so that would be discouraging for those of you who maybe be started stacking uh, when gold was was up to uh, at the beginning of the year when it was over $1,800 an ounce. Now it's below that. And this is after a recent rally in gold, still below where it was at the beginning of the year. Or maybe you came into gold uh, at its peak at almost $2,050 an ounce back in March. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you got to look at it through another type of lens. And you've heard me talk about and made reference to this, and that is how gold is valued in different currencies around the world. And because I think that is really the ultimate arbiter of where gold is these days and where gold has ever been. It's about value rather than thinking about the price. And yes, again, understanding that we live in a dollar denominated world, there's no question about that. But regardless, there are, there are other currencies around the world, too, where gold can be measured against. And when we look at those currencies, we can garner two things out of them. That is the strength of those currencies and the exchange rate value of those currencies. And that's really the bottom line here. I'm going to be referencing an article that really puts this into perspective for us um, uh, from Numismatic News about how, where gold is measured in these other currencies because the fact remains that for the most of the world gold is actually up this year rather than down while it may sound like owning gold wasn't a wonderful time this year to do most of the world's population would disagree the u.s dollar the brazil real the russian ruble and mexican peso currencies spent uh, in populous nations have appreciated against the gold uh, a year to date in 2022, the overwhelming majority of the world's population live in countries where gold has appreciated against the local currencies. That's remarkable to think about. People who live in China, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Japan, Ethiopia, Philippines, Egypt, Vietnam, and others, plus the 27 nations on the euro currency, along with Great Britain, have seen their currencies decline against gold this year. In other words, gold has gone up dramatically and measured in their currencies. So there have a list here. There's a list of these currencies, and you can see all the different nations where their, where their currencies have done very good um, against the gold, which means that the gold is down in those currencies. Currencies Like the Russian ruble, of course, things are very uh, different there. In Russia right now, a kind of a closed system, so their currency is rising. And it could very well could be that Russia has implemented gold and sold gold uh, back in, to its citizens. And the Brazil Real is up uh, 15%. Mexican peso is up. So gold is down in those countries. Where is the U.S. dollar? 6.1%, which means that gold is down 6.1%. And for the Russian ruble, gold is down 30%. Pretty remarkable to think about how these nations... So the U.S. dollar is still below on the list. And of course, it's the strongest of all currencies. So again, understanding the, the difference between the Costa Rica Cologne, for instance, 
one would garner that it has a better strength because it, it is 11.6% uh, up against gold. But that is not how the strength of the currencies are measured. They are measured against the breadbasket of other currencies and how much they are distributed around the world. And that is uh, the interesting thing because the worst performing currency out there is the Egyptian pound. And this is why they want to decouple from the pound from the dollar because their currency is is uh, collapsing. While the U.S. dollar is still used to price and pay for about 60% of international transactions around the world, let that sink in. You've heard me talk about that uh, time and time again. The U.S. dollar is utilized for 60% of international transactions around the world. Most people living in other countries conduct their financial lives in their local currencies. And by the way, that's the, the dollar hegemony. And when you think about that aspect uh, and how the BRICS nations are working against this because they see this, they don't wanna be trapped and enslaved by the dollar uh, for these transactions. They want to free themselves from it. Um, so those who own some physical gold among the billions of people who live in countries where their domestic currencies have fallen in value even more than the US dollar spot price of gold are happy to do so. So think about it, gold is the ultimate currency, uh, and when you, th uh, well, the ultimate money, and the very used little as currency, but you see nations like Zimbabwe, as I reported on recently, uh, selling gold from their central banks to their citizens to beat inflation. We may see more and more of that. In fact, we're gonna see nations abandon the dollar probably more and more as much as they can anyway in order to embrace gold and maybe even strengthen their domestic currencies. So let's take a look at these gold coins here. We've got the American Gold Eagle. So again, this is de denominated in dollars. As you can see here, that's $50. And so this coin here um, is utilizing dollars. It is the most recognized gold bullion coin uh, in the world. And uh, so therefore, its price is down against the year for a one ounce of gold there. Uh, let's take a look at the Canadian uh, coin here. This is a Canadian maple leaf, the smallest diameter, by the way, of gold coins. And this has a denomination on it of $50 as well. Of course, a Canadian dollar and an American dollar have two different values. And when we look at this chart, we can see the Canadian dollar is 0.3%. So it's right there on the precipice, only above the peso uh, as far as being a, like a valued against the dollar. So in other words, the, under Canadian, under the Canadian dollars, gold has only lost essentially 0.3%. So not a lot of room, not, not a lot of movement there, but you can see the difference and you can see how uh, gold has performed against the Canadian dollar uh, compared to the American dollar. Now let's take a look at uh, the uh, euro here. And the euro, you can find it on the list here, has lost 5.7%. And essentially that means that the euro's value against gold means that the gold has gone up 5.7% in as measured by euros. So this Austrian Philharmonic in gold, four nines fine pure gold, is an example of those who have bought gold in Austria have had to pay more in their currency for it. They've had to fi pay 5.7% more on average this year. And I actually kind of like this coin. I think it's a beautifully struck coin with a, a remarkable, interesting reeded edge there uh, with multiple different pat with a pattern there of missing reeds. Every, every, every fifth reed is gone, which is kind of cool. I like that. United States Mint could have taken a lesson from the Austrians in that regard. Now let's take a look at the worst case scenario, which we've seen more recently with an anomaly with what happened there with uh, with the previous uh, prime minister who is now gone, Liz Truss, sent the uh, pound into uh, oblivion, um, essentially. And so against the uh, Great Britain pound, uh, gold has risen 9.1%. So the currency has fallen. Uh, it has fallen down almost 10%. There it is, the Britannia. 
and it is measured in pounds. As you can see here, 100 pounds, Elizabeth II. This is an example of, uh, of what happens to gold in that country. So gold is very expensive for uh, Brits um, compared to other currencies around the world. And there you have it. Fascinating, interesting to see where things are with precious metals and how each of these metals represents the dollars and the currencies of those nations that we represent here. Some of the most extreme cases as outlined in this video. Now, there you go. Very interesting indeed. Let me know what your thoughts are uh, on the precious metals. And uh, somebody had requested quite some time ago, uh, uh, maybe a little bit of a light show. So I'm going to use the end of this video to show you, maybe change your paradigm shift of thinking to see how gold looks in different light. So check this out. Red. Green. Blue. Pink. Orange. Light green. Sort of a neon bluish green type color. A violet blue. And a purple, yeah, purple, gold and purple, look at that. Bright violet light. Indigo light, I think, at least I think that's indigo. What do you think of that? Light pink and the back to the originals. There you have it, hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video and to encourage you to keep on holding on to your gold and share this video, rate it. That means press the thumbs up button down below, comment, and subscribe.